Parvati. Where is this artwork from? So this artwork is from Karnataka in southern India in Asia. When was this artwork made? It was made around the year 1150 Common Era during the Hoysala dynasty. This is a sculpture. Uh, it's a family of Hindu gods. It was carved from chloritic schist, which is a metamorphic rock. This rock is somewhat soft, which allows for the extremely intricate detail that you see on this sculpture. So who does this artwork depict? This sculpture is of the Hindu god Shiva. He is the largest to show just how important he is. On his knee is his consort or wife, the goddess Parvati. And below them are their two children. You have Ganesh, the elephant-headed god, and Kartikeya, the warrior god. Um, also depicted are each of these gods, Vahanas. A Vahana is an animal or mythical creature that is associated with a particular Hindu deity. And this Vahana, this animal, supports and helps the god in all endeavors. So here we have a rat, which is for Ganesh, a bull named Nandi, who is for Shiva, an iguana for Parvati, and a peacock for Kartikeya. A sculpture like this is just like a family portrait. In Hinduism, just like in most religions and cultures, family is very important. And a sculpture like this reminds the onlooker to place importance on the family. So it really serves as a symbol of divine love. Also, this sculpture once was attached to the exterior of a Hindu temple that would have been dedicated to Shiva himself. A devotee of Shiva would view the sculpture as they circumambulated, which means to walk around, walk around the exterior uh, of a temple. And this circumambulation going around a temple is called pradakshina. And it's a very common practice in Hinduism. And images of gods on the exterior of a temple serve as reminders of what you will encounter once you get inside. So if you see an, an image of Shiva on the exterior of a temple while you're practicing pradakshina, then you're reminded of the many acts and good deeds, stories of Shiva, and ways to model yourself. But it's also like charging up. You're preparing yourself to have this kind of one-on-one -on -one encounter with the god, in this case Shiva, once you enter the temple. So if we're taking a closer look, how do we know this is the god Shiva when looking at the sculpture? And what's fun is Hindu sculptures leave clues for the viewer. In art history, we call these clues attributes. Attributes are objects held in the hands of the gods, or maybe it's a specific crown, a hairstyle, um, or clothing. Shiva has several attributes. For example, he typically holds a trident in one of his hands. But this sculpture is missing two of Shiva's hands. Uh, but we can still tell it's him. And here's how. Third eye. Shiva is depicted with a third eye positioned between his eyebrows. This eye does not function like our eyes do, which is to, to see the world before us. Shiva's third eye can see essentially a different dimension. It looks past something called Maya, which is the illusions of this world. So he can truly see the truth. Skulls. You'll notice uh, Shiva often has one or more skulls intertwined in his dreadlocks. Um, and this is a result of him meditating in cremation grounds. But don't worry, there's no reason to be afraid. Shiva is simply letting you know that death is a natural part of life. There's no reason to be afraid of a skull. And the skulls help us identify Shiva. Snakes. You'll often see a snake either wrapped around Shiva, maybe around his neck. It may be a cobra with a hood. And here, what's really fun is these nagas, which are you know a name for snakes uh, in India. These nagas look like earrings, and 
They essentially symbolize that Shiva is lord of all creatures, even the dangerous or poisonous ones. A really fun fact surrounding the sculpture is that Shiva in this particular image is appearing as Maheshvara, or the great god. And Parvati is depicted as Uma, who was the daughter of Himavan, the king of the mountains. That's important because Shiva is often depicted on top of Mount Kailash in the Himalayas or the Himalayas. And that's where he also likes to meditate and he spends a lot of his time with his family. And so this sculpture is often referred to as Uma Maheshvara, combining their two names together. As Uma, Parvati performed many meritorious or what praiseworthy or admirable deeds in order to marry Shiva. And if you look closely in Parvati's hand, you'll see this kind of round object, and that's a mirror. She's holding a mirror that she's facing towards Shiva, and this serves as reflection of his divine beauty.